Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name's Vin PF, and on today's episode, we're going to be covering something which I think is probably a little bit special. Now, if you're a fan of the show, you will have remembered that I did a show on ETOH last year, and I uh, spoke to them in depth and tried a couple of their samples. Now, these guys are in Copenhagen, Denmark, and they are rapid aging whiskey, let's say, in inverted commas, as we'll get into in a bit. They're quite clear this is not whiskey, but what they're doing is uh, attempting to replicate the aging process in a, a very short amount of time using various different sciences. Now, um, the key fact that you need to remember about these guys is that they aren't just ultrasound. Ultrasound is a part of it for sure, but they're not just sticking it in an ultrasound. What they're doing is uh, working with universities and using their own know-how to try and replicate some of the chemical changes that happen over years in a cask that includes uh, compound breakdowns and oxygenation and things like that. So, you know, this isn't just a simple rapid aging experiment. This is like really trying hard to chemically replicate what happens in a cask over X amount of years in a matter of days. Now, I won't go too much into detail more about what they're doing because if you're interested in that, and you know, I, I think everyone should check it out to be honest. It's my video, I know, but it's really, really interesting. Um, I'll put a link in the description below for that video. So if you are interested, you can go and check that out. Um, in any case, what we have over here is a bottle of Arbide. Now, uh, I should say as well here, they did send me this for review. Uh, in fact, they got in touch because um, at the time when I did the last video, they couldn't really ship to the UK. Uh, I think sort of like maybe Brexit was causing an issues, whatnot. Um, but they're in a position now where they can ship a bit broader. You know, obviously, if you're in the EU, then you should be able to get hold of this fairly easily. But now it can ship to the UK and a few other countries besides. Um, you know, obviously shipping and whatnot. But we'll we'll talk about that later when we talk about the price after the actual tasting. So yeah, today we have the Arbide. Now this is um, one of their kind of dare I say core releases. Uh, but you know, Arbide means work in Danish, and um, this is their peated expression, fully peated. Um, there's lots of information on the back of the label here. I won't hold it up too long, but you can see some information about how it was made here and some information about the craziness and the peatiness and whatnot here. But the kind of, the cool things about this is, so this is sourced malted peated barley from Scotland. Uh, I don't know if that was held into a cask. I, I believe, I said most distilleries are set up to, um, you kind of go straight into a, a cask almost. Uh, they don't really go to other things. So I imagine it was either put into a cask briefly before it was moved to an IBC or whatever. I genuinely don't know. So I don't know if there's been you know a few days or whatever of aging beforehand. And then there's some steel involved and some Sherry Oloroso staves. Uh, as you'll see in my other video, if you go and check it out, they've got a big reactor where they put staves in uh, and the actual ultrasound takes place in a separate compartment, which is full of chips. Uh, and there's some temperature information and some ultrasound information if you're interested in that as well. Um, but yeah, so this is their peated expression. Um, now this is a 47 percenter, and before we go any further, I should say as well, aged for nine days. Nine days, so from whatever kind of malt they got, I should say before, like new make spirit almost, uh, it was then aged for nine days to produce this. And um, yeah, I was very impressed with their samples they sent over last year, so I was very keen to try this. So of course, I said yes. Please send that over. And they did send me some samples as well for some other of their products. They've got lots of weird and interesting things that they're making um, because you know they they can just do whatever they want, right? You know, they, there's no kind of kind of governing laws like the SWA making sure they do things in the right way because they're not double distilling in a pot still and things like that. You can just do whatever they want. Why not? Why not? Let's get into this one then and see what we've actually got on the uh, on the nose and the palate and uh, see how it stacks up against kind of traditional fare, let's say. Um, I believe natural colour and non-chill filtered. Um, don't think it says on the label, but you know, whatever. Um, so yeah, it looks pretty good. Let's get onto the nose. Oh. It's got such a good nose. It's um, so I mean, obviously peat. So straight away, I should you know, you know, it's quite clear. If you're not into your peat, definitely not the one for you to try. It's um, airing on the kind of medicinal peaty side at the start, but. It's kind of clean and fresh. You know how sometimes with peat you get kind of like earthy bogginess or an ashy kind of vibe from it, like an Arbeg. It's not like that. It's kind of fresh and clean. It's, yeah, really nice. 
and there's kind of almost like a, a brininess, like a sea air thing going on to it as well. It's like a mixture of like a fresher Laphroaig and a Talisker, that kind of vibe we're talking about here. Let's get onto the palette. Mm. Oh, now, it's so it's just genuinely so good, right? So, um, interestingly here, before the peak kicks in, you get a waft of sweetness that, well, at least I do, I should say. For me, it's kind of like a ginger and a honey kind of vibe. It's pretty short, then the smokiness kicks in, but we're talking about, so something I like to talk about is the kind of stages of a bonfire. Um, this is akin to the kind of later stages, you know, after there's still a bit of flame going on, still a bit of smoke, but that kind of like dying embers kind of smokiness um, is the only way I can really describe this sort of thing. It's, it isn't like ashen and in your face, but it's, um, you know, warming and smoky, you know, that kind of like, you know, when you smell it on your clothes after you've been standing next to a bonfire, that kind of thing. After that, I'll have another quick sip. After that, you get kind of a big pepperiness and almost like an aniseedy vibe to it. And then the finish is like huge, just long, just keeps going. Smoky, spicy, peppery, lovely. Okay, obviously very enthusiastic about this. Um, was really hoping I would like it for a start, but yeah, I do. And it's, um, yeah, nine days old, which is mad. Now, let's talk about price for a second, because this is um, 510 Danish, I want to say krona, but it's krona, it's krona, krona, something like that. In the UK, that translates to about £58. So, already it's up there. And then, obviously, you've got to factor in shipping. You know, that's going to, you know, internationally, that's going to be fairly expensive. I don't know exactly how much that's going to be. Um, so, yeah, for a traditional bottle of whiskey... I think that's probably quite expensive, but in this case, wh wh who I'm talking to now, you hopefully watching this video, you're uh, extremely enthusiastic about innovation and interesting bottles, and you're probably maybe a bit bored with the typical supermarket fare. You know, that's kind of where I'm at in my whiskey drinking. Um, this is like absolutely ideal. I guarantee you will not be able to pick this out in a blind lineup with other tradition, traditional Scottish whiskies, peated whiskies. Um, I say I guarantee. It's not fair to say. Maybe there's some slight differences there, but you know, for me, it, this is like it's not even just like it's not even replicating Scottish whisky. It, it's better than quite a lot of of basic Scottish whiskies. Um, you know, it's up there with with some of the boys that are around that sort of price anyway, and yet nine days old now obviously people that talk about age are going to struggle with that concept because you know we, we talk about age in, in whiskey and I, it's just a number in my opinion but you know people say that's a lot for a 12 year old or that's quite cheap for an 18 year old whatever kind of unlearn that a little bit and um just try something interesting because yeah this isn't whiskey that's the key thing to remember here so it's not pretending to be whiskey it's not saying it's better than whiskey it just is what it is uh, and I think anybody who is a whiskey fan who really, really, really likes to try kind of innovation, if you don't, if that's not you, don't worry about it. You know, I'm not trying to push this thing on you. But if you are, I implore you to kind of see if you can figure out how to get a bottle. You know, um, you know that said, again, it's going to be fairly expensive to ship it over. And if you are in the EU, recommend you check them out if you can, because this thing is um, constantly scoring pretty well on like whiskey base. I think whiskey base is getting on for like 90 out of 100, which is rare to see whiskeys constantly scoring that high. And for me, I think it's pretty fabulous. So I'm gonna say a quick cheers to you guys and have the last little sip of this and I'm gonna greatly enjoy this. And if you're lucky enough to see me at some point in the future, I'll probably share this with you because I'm keen to get these on people's radar because this is good stuff. Cheers, I'll see you again on the next video.